Okay, problem three is basically the Joule cycle. And uh, the, the, the reason for having this, we, we had it in the lecture, was this is the simplest of cycles. And it, was, it revealed that state functions are indeed path independent. And since it's being done using physical laws, empirical laws, they, they know no exceptions. So if we can show that the energy and the change in energy for a system is independent of path. In this case, that means it's independent. And physical laws, no, no exception. That means it's path independent in every case. So there's no exception. And this also reveals that the energy is a state function because it's path independent. And also, the work and the heat are path dependent. So, you know, and this is going to be from the first law. So we're going to be using the ideal gas law and the first law of thermodynamics for this particular problem. Okay. And now, the problem was an ideal monoatomic gas is cooled isochroically from state A with a pressure of 4 atmospheres and a volume of 10 liters to state B with a pressure of two atmospheres and a volume of 10 liters, then expanded isobarically to state C with a pressure of two atmospheres and a volume of 30 liters. And I ask uh, the three questions. What is Q, A, B, C? What is uh, that question A? Part B is what is W, A, B, C, which is the work. And then part C is what is delta E? for A to C. And um, so I want to, what you should do when you go to solve this one, I prefer on your scratch paper, you're going to have a diagram where this is the volume and this is the pressure. And we're going to diagram it where this is state A. I believe it's state A with yeah, four atmospheres. This is four atmospheres. And we're going to go down to two atmospheres. And this is 10 liters, yeah. And we're going to go from state A to state B, which is isochroic. Isochroic means what? Same temperature? Constant volume. Constant volume. Constant volume. Oh, okay. okay. So it's a constant volume process. And then we're going to take from state B isobarically to state C. And isobaric means what? Constant, constant pressure. Constant pressure. So delta P equals zero here, delta V equals zero here. And we're going to go A to B and B to C. And what we've showed in the, uh, uh, in the lecture, we included another state up here for the Joule cycle, which well, well, this is going to be state C, we call it state D. And we could go this way as well, and we would get the same result. That was what we used the Joule cycle to show. And also, if I were to go for a full cycle, I go from A to B to C to D and back to A, what is delta E going to be? Zero. Zero. It doesn't matter how many, state, how many steps. And that's true for all cycles. So that was revealed. And the, the, the most important part is the first law. Um, I'm gonna, before we start getting into problem A, the delta A cycle is equal to zero for every cycle. And since the first law, what is the first law of thermodynamics again? Delta E is equal to what? Q plus W. Q plus W. Because we're doing thermodynamics from a chemist's point of view. In chemistry, we're more interested in the system of molecules. And that's where we differ from the physics and the engineering points of view. They're more interested in the work done by the gizmos and gadgets 
So the sign of the work is opposite, because uh, work is not, we're considering the work done by the system and on the system, the molecules, they have the opposite approach. So in many texts, when you're reading from an engineering point of view, the first law would be Q minus W. But that's just because the applications they're using it on, it's more convenient that way. We're going to do it from a chemist's point of view. Since delta E cycle, equals Q plus W equals zero, therefore Q cycle equals minus W cycle. And for every cycle, the heat and the work are non-zero. And for every cycle, the heat is equal in magnitude but opposite in sign from the work performed. And this is what led actually Carnot and others to try to uh, uh, maximize the work done and the way they did that was by maximizing the heat so they had the maximum temperature difference between the hot stage and the cold stage and actually a lot of people died doing that because they had boiler explosions and killed everybody but uh, that's what we're, uh, we're again we're always driven by the need to maximize the work. And that was what motivated us all along. And we're ultimately going to find that we found that the maximum work is for a reversible process. And also, when we're dealing with cycles, it's going to be the one that has the maximum heat transferred in the cycle. It's the maximum temperature difference between the hot stage and the cold stage. So now let's address the problem. We want to go from here to here and here to here. So this is all scratch paper. But it makes it much easier to solve the problem. Now, uh, A. Q, A, B, C. It's going to be equal to what? Q, A, B plus B, C. That's going to be equal to QAB QAB because it's, what is that? It's iso what? Oh, it's isochroic. isochroic. And the heat capacity, so it's going to be equal to the number of moles times the molar heat capacity and constant volume conditions times delta T. And that's equal to for a monoatomic ideal gas, three halves R times delta T, which is equal to, we'll pull the three halves out times N R uh, times T final minus T initial. Now, what does the ideal gas law say about N R T? Yeah, it's the product of the pressure and the volume. And so, uh, 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 that's going to be equal to three halves uh, times uh, P B V B minus P A V A, and we're going to find a, a similar expression for the isobaric step. So that's equal to three halves. The change in pressure is two atmospheres minus four atmospheres, which is minus two atmospheres, and the volume is constant times 10 liters. And so now the twos cancel, so it's minus 30 liter atmospheres. Okay, now, Q, B, C is what kind of a step? Isobaric. Isobaric. So that's going to be equal to NCP delta T, which is going to be equal to, uh, turns out to be uh, N times 5 halves R times delta T equals, um, we'll just cut through to the chase. I don't need to include that step, but a similar approach gives me 5 halves times P 
PC, VC minus PB, VB. And in this case, that's equal to um, 5 halves. And now the pressure is constant. What is the pressure in this case? Two atmospheres. Times what's delta V? 20 liters. Uh, 30 liters minus 20 liters. Minus 10. Minus 10. Minus 10 liters, yeah, which is 20 liters. So now the two cancels, I have 5 times 20 equals 100 liter atmospheres. And Q, A, B, C is equal to Q, A, B plus Q, B, C equals minus 30 liter atmospheres plus 100 liter atmospheres equals 70. Yeah. Well, why did R drop out? Uh, um, because uh, uh, NRT, the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. PV equals Therefore, NRT. Okay. And in general, what you would do when you solve this, you wouldn't have to have all these steps. Uh, the ideal way to, uh, to fit this on the page is you would do make this statement QABC equals QAB plus QVC, and then I would cut right to equals 3 halves PV, VV minus PA, VA uh, plus 5 halves uh, uh, PC, VC minus PV, VB because that is in generally true. And the only reason you uh, I had this spelled out this way was because we had to incorporate the heat capacity and the constant volume conditions and the heat capacity and the constant pressure conditions in order to get these expressions. So. A lot of this is extraneous on the test. You can do what it says on the key, and I would have just gone from this statement directly to uh, three halves PVVV minus PAVV plus five halves PCVC minus PPVV, and then you could just substitute in these values, which come immediately follow from that, and you get that same result. Okay. Is that what is there a question? I have a question. Yes. Um, I got different numbers for this one. You did? I got, I got, I got per A right, completely mm -hmm. right, but different numbers. Oh. The test is different. Oh, uh, oh, on the test, we the uh, the actual midterm. Yeah, the actual midterm. Oh, the actual midterm had, was a different question. So what midterm are we doing? Oh, uh, well, this is the practice midterm. Oh. Yeah, we're going over the practice midterm at this point. Yes, you're going to get different numbers. In fact, that's it's going to be that question, but you're going to have different. Never mind. I thought we were still doing the. Oh uh, no, uh, uh, we could entertain that one as well. But... No, I, I understand. Okay. So, okay. Right. Is everybody good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, James. Oh, I'm good. Oh, oh, you're good. Yeah. Okay. So.